Okay, today we're gonna look at finding a balance point. The example I have here is a teeter-totter with two kids of different masses, so the fulcrum in the middle isn't gonna work well for them. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out where should I move that fulcrum to so that they can teeter-totter evenly. So this is the idea. So I have a seven meter long teeter-totter. It has a mass of 20 kilograms, and I have a 50 kilogram kid and a 30 kilogram kid. And they're each sit, sitting about one meter in from each side, and I wanna figure out how far from that left edge should I place that fulcrum so that they balance perfectly so that they can teeter-totter nicely. So that's our goal here. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, all right, if we put the balance point in the correct spot, that means there's gonna be no net torques and no net forces on this. This thing could just balance there. And so it'll be up to the kids pushing off the ground to get it to teeter-totter. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sum up the forces in the y direction and set it equal to zero. So looking at my four forces here, I have the force from that fulcrum minus the weight of the kid, minus the weight of the other kid, and minus the weight of the teeter-totter itself will all add up to zero. So the force will equal the sum of the weights. And so I have M1 plus M2 plus M3 all times G. And so if I add those up, I have 50 plus 20 plus 30, so I get 100 times 9.8 gives me 980 newtons. So the fulcrum does have to support 980 newtons in order for this teeter-totter to work pro properly. So the next thing we need to set up is our torque equation. So in order to set up our torque equation, we need to choose an axis of rotation. Now because it's in static equilibrium, or the example I'm looking at is, I'm gonna get to choose where I wanna put my axis of rotation. So since I'm trying to figure out how far from the left edge is it, I'm gonna choose my axis of rotation here. So I'm gonna choose my axis of rotation at the end. Now the other thing I need to do for my torque equation is I need to know all my distances. Now I don't know where this force is, so I'm just gonna ignore it for now. Uh, the whole thing is seven meters long, so that means this is 3.5 to the center, so this is 2.5 and 2.5. Now the reason I do this is it's gonna help me figure out the distance from the axis of rotation to each of these forces to set up my torque equation. Now you'll notice to start with, all of my forces are acting perpendicular to that radial line. So that means I'm not gonna have to resolve any of these into components. So let's set it up. Let's figure out which type of torque we're gonna be having. So we can go ahead and use our right hand rule. And so R and then F into the board. So that means it's a negative torque. If that's not working for you to figure out which way your thumbs point, is it pointing into the board? Is it pointing out of the board? So in is negative, out is positive. You can just take your pencil, or in my case, I'm using a ruler, and you can push like you're that force. So for instance, I'm pushing like M1G. I see that my ruler or my pencil is gonna turn clockwise. That's my negative direction. Same thing for all of the masses. They all cause a negative or a clockwise direction torque, whereas this applied force produces a counterclockwise or a positive torque. So I see that I have a negative, a negative, a negative, and a positive torque. So let's go ahead and generate that torque equation then. So the sum of the torques is equal to zero in our case here. I have M1G times how far away it is, one meter from the axis of rotation, and it's negative, minus M3G times how far away it is from the end, 3.5 meters, and then minus M2G times how far away it is, which is six meters, and then plus that force, which is my 980 newtons, times how far away it is, which I don't know, I'm just gonna call it D though. And all that adds up to zero. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna solve for what is D. Since I know F and I know all the M's, I should be able to solve for D. So D is going to equal the sum of all this. So M1G times one plus M3G times 3.5 plus M2G times six, all divided by that force. And when I go ahead and plug those numbers in, I get four meters from the, whoops, 
I'm sorry, I don't get four meters. I get uh, three meters. I get three meters there. And so I plug in those numbers, I get three meters. It's on this side, okay, so it's three meters from the left end. Another way to say that is it's 0.5 meters to the left of center. Okay. So there we go, that's how we find that balance point. You're gonna to have to do it in two steps. You're gonna to have to sum up the forces and then do the torque equation. Now some problems you're able to like choose your axis rotation to eliminate an unknown. But since our two unknowns are stuck together, uh, we can't do that in this situation. So we do have to set up a force problem and then do our torque problem. Uh, this also goes with the lab we do, the mobile lab, so hopefully that helps.